good morning. This is not my usual surroundings, but it was a beautiful morning here, and I thought I would sneak outside a little bit to one of our pastures. My kids are still waking up, and Jason said he would take care of everybody for a little bit so I could chat with you. Today I want to talk to you about frugal living with a large family, how we afford a large family on just one income. We don't make a ton of money. There have been seasons of our life where we were barely scraping by, but we always made it through those seasons, and the Lord has always provided, and I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about some of the choices that we make that, have, that has made that possible. So if you are new here, just stopping in, I'm Julie, and I have eight children. Uh, my husband is the breadwinner for the family. <laughs> And um, I do YouTube, but it is like pocket change. I think last month I made like um, $110 maybe. <laughs> it's been up and down, but typically, um, yeah, it, I just do this because it's a ministry for me to be able to encourage you. Um, definitely, um, definitely not um, worth, it, the, worth it if you're looking at it from a monetary point of view, but... That's not why I'm here. The first one that I want to talk about is food. Eating out is expensive. Convenience food is expensive. I don't think any of us would deny that. But let's just break it down. Number one, when you go grocery shopping, avoid those fast foods. So the foods that are already made and you can be, um, they can just be heated up in your oven. Or a lot of snack foods. These are the areas where your grocery budget is going to go up because they're convenience. We also do not buy fancy drinks. So we don't buy any soda ever. That's just not in our house. But we also don't buy juice because to me, it's just kind of a money waster. Juice that you buy from the store doesn't have the nutrients of a fresh juice. It's basically like drinking expensive water, in my opinion. <laughs> and so we prefer to, we have a juicer. And if we want juice, we juice our own so that we are actually getting something that is very positively impacting our health. Um, we also drink, um, we make like our own lemonade, we call it, where we, I can link that below, where we use um, real lemon concentrate and stevia. And I even throw in vitamin C. So it's a very cheap way to get a drink that feels fun. Another thing that we will do if we want a fun drink is make our own tea because a couple of tea bags can be stretched to make two pitchers of some fun herbal tea sweetened with a little bit of stevia for the whole family. Um, much cheaper than you can buy, unless of course you're buying things that aren't so good for your body. That would be the cheap way to buy convenience food is to buy those things that just aren't good for you. So what I do is I, um, I like to buy in bulk I prefer once a month grocery shopping because then I'm avoiding all of the temptation of those little things that are fun but not going to last, not going to stretch for the month. And so I typically will do a big monthly grocery shopping trip. I will stock up on ingredients that can be made into meals. Um, and I will try to eat what's in season because it's going to be cheaper. So your fruits and your vegetables um, look for those things that are the cheapest because what it means is they're growing right now. And so it's, it's you know, I don't buy fresh tomatoes in February typically because they don't taste as good as the garden ones in August and they're just more expensive. And so we'll eat in season. I also make sure that I have a filler at my meals. So for dinner, something like rice is a great filler. It's a cheap way to fill those tummies. Um, we use meat as a side instead of the main course typically. Occasionally we'll have meat as more of your main. The cat just knocked over my tripod. I'm using a piece of wood out here. So that's another point I'll talk about in a little bit. But where was I? Um, meat. We typically use meat as a side instead of the main item at the meal because of course meat is expensive. And from what my chiropractor tells me, it's, this is the healthier way to do it anyway. And so if we are having you know, chicken, for example, we'll make a lot of vegetables and rice to go with it. And so chicken would be just one of the portions on the plate with all of the other things there too. Or a, a lot of times I will make a stir fry and just put the chicken in it. That way I can guarantee that it is <laughs> definitely be, being consumed as one of the lesser ingredients in the meal. 
Um, when we do things occasionally for fun, like bacon in the morning, it's just a couple of pieces alongside whatever else we're having. We try to keep the expensive portion down to a minimum. Soups are a great way to stretch a dollar. Um, it's hard for me to make soups in the summer. I don't make it as much just because of the temperature, but in the winter, this is our main food item is soup. I can take, um, you know, I will save. I will save after when the meal is done, if there's rice left in my pot, I put it in a container. If there are vegetables, I put it in a container. And I will just save all of those leftovers and then use it in a soup. So I can make a soup for almost nothing. I will make my own broth from the bones of the chicken. It's just those kind of little tips that um, you can make your food stretch. I think this is something that has kind of been um, passed down in my family, my mom, my grandma were really good at just kind of making food stretch. I remember watching my grandma and being amazed at all the little bits of odds and ends that she would save from different meals and then turn into something new. And so that's something that I have kind of carried on in my own life and it does save a lot of money. Of course, growing your own food is a great way to save money if you have an option for that if you have a sunny spot in your yard you can just grow or there's so many ways even in um, the city to try to grow a little bit I'm not gonna go into all of those today because that is a separate video topic also drink water <laughs> not just because we're not buying the sodas and so it it's what we have to drink anyway but drink water because when your body is properly hydrated you're going to feel satisfied I think sometimes for me I'm eating just out of an I'm really thirsty on a deep level, but if I'm not recognizing that and not filling that need, then I will go try to find some food to put in there. So make sure that your family is drinking water throughout the day. If we do go out to eat, like I said, this is very rare, but if we do go out to eat, we will hit up the places that have the kids eat free. And so the way we can do this now is that typically for each adult portion, they will give you two free kids meals. So we have eight children. So Jason and I and my two older kids will get the adult meals, which gives us a whole lot of free kids meals. And then we can spread the food around accordingly. Um, but that is something that we try to take advantage of if the place has that option. We also will eat out in a more, um, just a less traditional way. So maybe we will go when we're not quite as um, hungry just so we can have the fun experience of eating out we'll kind of eat the bigger meal at home and then go order something small just for fun or we would go to Ikea and kind of make a day of it because they have cheap meals and you can have the fun of going taking your kids eating out walking through the store um, it was just a fun thing to do also um, we will occasionally have mom and child date nights and or date mornings breakfast where I will, over a period of time, take each of the kids out for an individual date with me. That way we can go and have that fun eating out experience because it's just me and one other child. Okay, my next major point is buying used. This is huge, huge for our family. And if you truly want to have success in saving money, you need to get over the mindset that you need to buy new because this is one of the best ways to save money. We have been buying used or free, finding free things from Craigslist or from other people since the beginning of our marriage and it has saved us so much money. Of course, the first thing that you automatically think of is clothes, getting used clothes, passing down the hand-me-downs. Of course we do that. Um, I'm shocked when I go into a store and see the prices on new clothes. I cannot imagine how expensive it would be to clothe all of my children. And you know what? kids get clothes dirty, they get it torn, they get it messed up. They are not carefully preserving their outfits like many adults do. So we do buy um, at thrift stores. There are so many options for this here in the United States now. I feel like it has become a very, um, a very common way to shop is to go to thrift stores. There are um, everything from our little local community thrift store where you can get clothes for 25 cents or 50 cents up to the upscale thrift stores that are a little bit farther away from us where you are going to pay probably close to half of what it costs for that item to be new. 
but you're going to have that boutique feel and you're going to go in and um, everything is carefully sorted and you have the beautiful dressing rooms and all of that experience. So if you're really struggling with stopping buying clothes new and stepping down to buying used, maybe that would be a first step for you is to find something like that in your area. Some things, of course, I can't buy used um, and so I will typically um, watch for sales on that. I will get things like socks and underwear I order from Amazon typically. I'll just find the best deal on those. And then I keep my eye out for racks, clearance racks. Um, you know, if I have to run into a store like a Walmart or something like that where I'm getting something else, I will glance through their clearance racks because typically at the end of the season, they will get rid of things for very cheap to where last year as we were going into winter I found a bunch of sandals for the kids at one dollar or two dollars a pair and so I just bought one in every size because that's kind of how the need is around here um, you know it's the same thing with jackets or shirts or anything if I can find something for a dollar or two dollars for a kid item I will go ahead and buy that and add it to my my collection of clothes I have a bin for each size I don't go over that bin because it just gets to be too much clothing. And so I just get one bin for each clothing size for boys and each clothing size for girls. And as I'm given items, I have some great friends who will pass clothes down to us or if I find deals, I will just put those into the proper bins. And as my kids need the clothes, they get to go shop in our uh, storage shed. So that's pretty fun. Now this doesn't just apply to clothes. Buying used goes for everything buy used everything. Before you purchase anything, stop and think, can I buy this used? I was just talking to a friend yesterday who uh, they're working on getting some animals at their home for the first time. They, first they were buying this um, welded wire, which is kind of like this fencing. They were buying it new because it didn't cross her mind to stop and look for used. And when they were going to have to go back for a second roll, which the stuff is pretty expensive, she thought, well, I'm going to look on Facebook Marketplace first. And guess what? There it was, very cheap. Somebody had bought a roll, decided they didn't want it, and they were selling it for next to nothing. Always look. It doesn't take that long to look if you're in a hurry. And the most ideal thing to do is to wait. If you know you need to buy something, wait a few weeks and keep your eyes open for something used. Talk to the Lord, ask him to provide it for you. It's amazing how he does this for us. It's just wonderful when we are patient and we slow down how he's willing to provide us with things that we need or even just want because he's just a good God like that. So things that we um, have bought used, big things, of course, cars. We've never bought a new vehicle. Um, that's, that's just the number one that people will tell you. I remember my husband actually sold cars for a while and they said that your car would depreciate as you were driving off the lot. <laughs> like the moment you buy it and drive it away, it's already losing money. So that of course is a huge one is buying your cars used. Um, typically, we will look on Craigslist for this. We don't go to a dealer to buy a used car because that's going to be more expensive. So we'll typically buy from Craigslist. Um, also, remodel projects. If you have followed us for long, you know that our life is one big remodel project. <laughs> and this is something that you can do for cheap if you look for used items. So for example, our bathroom in our current little house. When we went to put in this bathroom, we did not buy new. We looked on Craigslist. People are very fickle. They will buy things to remodel and then the next year they'll decide that they want it to look new. And so they'll take those things that are really pretty unused and put them for sale for people like us who want to save money and don't care if something's brand new. So our, um, our uh, clawfoot bathtub was something that we um, got for free and it, it was out of the old house here I can show you that story I can link it down in the description box if you want to see that but our uh, pedestal sink even our toilet <laughs> yes our toilet was second hand because again if you keep your eyes open you will be amazed at the deals you can find and something that we see a lot is houses in very nice neighborhoods that aren't very used because people will often be gone at work all day they'll want to remodel and then the things will go on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or something else like that for sale. This is another thing that our family members are really good at. I know the kids, Grandpa Mike, really likes to look for deals and he'll even send me deals sometimes on things that he sees. Um, just kind of 
runs in our family, I guess. Do it yourself. While I'm on the topic of remodeling, this is a big way you can save money. Now, my husband is pretty handy, but there have been things that he did not know how to do. For example, at our last house, we wanted to put in a bathroom upstairs. There had never been a bathroom up there before, so there was no plumbing at all. And plumbing was not something that he was comfortable with. So what he did was hire a plumber to come in for an hour to talk to him about the specific needs of that space because it had to be, the pipes had to be at a different angle. It was just kind of a tricky situation. So we hired a plumber for an hour. They talked through it all, the, helped him come up with pl a game plan and what he needed to do, and then that was it. We just paid the plumber for that amount of time. Jason did the rest. One of the biggest places that we go to, of course, is YouTube, which is the free how-to for everything. If Jason or I don't know how to do something, we just go look on YouTube because somebody is out there who has done it before and is gonna tell you how to do it. It is an awesome resource. We have friends who um, their husband is not very handy, but has decided that he's done paying people to do so many things that he feels like he could do for free. He's actually a computer guy, so this is really out of his comfort zone, and yet he has gotten on YouTube and he has learned how to fix their dryer, how to repair things in their car, how to change out the faucet in the bathroom. All of these things he knew nothing about, but he just watched the videos, went step by step through, and he's so proud <laughs> when he's done and he did it for free. So you can do it, just give it a try. Give it a try, and at the very least, um, find somebody that you could just pay for a little bit of help and then do the rest yourself. Also, you do have to balance time versus money when you're doing things yourse yourself. Uh, for example, with me, I make my own cleaners, like cleaning sprays, because you can do it for pennies using vinegar and some drops of essential oil, very cheap. Sewing my own clothes, not something that I do. That is not worth my time and money. I can get those for cheap somewhere else. Um, I don't. You know, that's just for me, not a priority. Um, you have to look at things and decide what is worth me doing, what is worth asking someone else to do. And of course, don't forget about bartering because something might be really easy to someone else and hard to you. And you could swap skills and, um, you know, both have a great deal for both of you. So as far as outings, taking outings as a family, we like to have fun as a family. And if you talk to our kids, they will tell you that we have a lot of fun as a family. We rarely pay for that fun. Now we are very blessed to live near St. Louis where there are lots of free things to do. So if you wanted to do museums or the zoo or the science center, all of those are free in St. Louis. That is a huge benefit. But there are other free things that you can do. Um, mostly we do free things at our home so we have never taken our kids to the movie theater I know it's crazy but we just rent movies and have a fun movie night at home um, if you do want to go to the movies check for those days where the tickets are really cheap that would be a great way to do it I was just not something that's really big on a priority list so you have to know what works for you we also do not take Disney vacations or those kind of things that would be really expensive Again, for us, we would just rather make that money um, spread out and last for something else. And so we'll just, you know, it's just not on our priority list. Everyone's different and you have to assess the things that are important to you and do those things. Use less. This is a very small thing. So I started with the big money things. Now we're gonna get into some smaller things. Use less. Have you seen some children squeeze toothpaste on their toothbrush? It is excessive. It is falling out of their mouth or they rinse half of it off with water. Teach your children to use less, to use an appropriate amount of things. This goes for soap, even laundry detergent. I don't put in as much as the bottle recommends because I found that with half the amount, it works for me and it makes that bottle stretch twice as long. So just think with everything you do, how you can use less of it uh, or be more wise with it. Just take a day or two to analyze what you do all day long to watch yourself and your habits and see if there may be an area that you could cut back on. Also a tip is we were given a foaming hand soap pump. Oh boy, am I saying that right? A subscriber gave us this soap dispenser. That's the word I'm looking for. And it is a foaming soap dispenser. I can link it below. It is incredible. You put just a very small amount of soap in and fill the rest up with water. And it has a, a mechanism within the pump that creates a wonderful foaming soap for hand soap. So that has helped, especially with all my kids running in and out, washing their hands all day. 
um, we were, you know, kids. Again, they just pumped that thing. and We were going through so much soap. So that problem has been solved. Cut your own hair. Okay, I have a tutorial for the quick way that I cut my own hair. I cut everyone in the household's hair. I've done it from the very beginning. Like I tell people, right now is the perfect time to try it because people aren't going out quite as much as they did because of current events. And so stay home and cut your own hair. That way, if you're embarrassed, you can just <laughs> stay home for a couple more weeks and not show anybody. Wear a hat. Um, it's really not as hard as you would think, and it saves tons of money. Um, I cut my boy's hair mostly using a trimmer, which I can link our trimmer in the description box. There are lots of videos showing you how to cut the boy's hair. I have had some requests to show how I do it. I'm gonna, I'm trying to let my hair, my boy's hair grow long enough that I can show you that, and then I will do a video on that. I cut Jason's hair. We experiment with styles sometimes. I'll look online for extra tips. For my girls, both of my girls have the goal of growing their hair past their waist. I, I don't think I could handle that personally, but they both have decided they want to do that, and so I rarely cut their hair. I'll just do a tiny little trim on the ends for health, um, but that kind of makes it easy on me. Also, bartering, I talked about earlier. Also think of bartering for babysitting. So if you or your husband wants to take a date, first of all, there is a movement going around that says that you need to go out on a date with your husband once a week. <laughs> and I'm just here to tell you that I have a healthy, thriving marriage, and we probably go on like a date a year, if it comes down to it, of a serious going all out date. For many years, we did not date ever. Um, now that I have a kid who's old enough to babysit, we will take a quick, like, maybe we'll go two hours and go, you know, get some lunch, take out, and sit together in the car and talk. So my life is changing in this area. But for the years when I had many little children at home, we just did not date out. But we have a thriving marriage because we date in. So we would put our kids to bed early. That was just something that we did when all our kids were small. We put them to bed early. And we felt like we had a date every night. We would be intentional about our time together. We would sit on the couch. We'd eat a fun snack that we might not feed the kids and call it, you know, our, our dinner night out. We would watch a movie together. We would, whatever. Whatever kind of shoulder time we want to have. We would just spend that time together. And then we would try to always go to bed at the same time. So it really felt like a together kind of evening. Um, and we didn't need to go out. Sometimes I think going out can be more stressful because you have this buildup of feeling like it needs to be something. Um, whereas when you're at home, you don't have those expectations. You just enjoy each other. Another um, tip that I have is to reuse things. So the thing that is coming to mind right off the bat is Ziploc bags. I will buy the high quality Ziploc bags and anything that is dry, chips, crackers, um, you know, those kind of things, I always reuse the bags. If it contains a meat product, you know, something like that, I do not reuse those, I just throw them away. But I make my Ziploc bags last a very long time by reusing them and there are other things that you can do this for as well. Always think, can I reuse this before I throw it away? And the last tip that I have for you today is probably not going to be a very popular one, but it has been a very big blessing in my life, and it's go without. Just do without. There are so many things that we feel like we need to have, and we don't. We just don't need to have them. <laughs> I remember a season of life when we were really struggling financially, and we just did without butter. Um, it it's, was a luxury to us, and we just decided, hey, we're just not going to buy butter for a while. It was other things too, it wasn't just butter, but I'm just showing that it can be something that feels like a necessity, but it doesn't have to be a necessity. Those months went by, and you know what, now I don't even remember what it felt like to be without butter because it wasn't really that big of a deal. Just go without. Um, we make pancakes a lot because I use my sourdough discard to make pancakes. We use maple syrup very little. I don't like the fake stuff, I don't like the ingredients that are in it, and so once in a while we buy the real stuff, but it's an expensive thing, and so we don't have it every time. And because that's how it is, my kids are used to it. And so sometimes they'll just munch on the pancake plain like a snack, that's typically what they'll do. Or you can use it to put peanut butter on top, or you can just drizzle it with honey. There are other ways to do things that might be less expensive. Just again, reassess everything in your life and think, is this necessary? Could I take a break from this? Is there a substitution I could do? Um, go without. 
Here's a big one for me, impulse buying. Are any of us really immune to impulse buying? Some of us have a harder time than others. When I go to a store, like I was talking about going to Walmart, or for those of you who shop at Target, we don't have anywhere in any Target near us, but you know, these kind of stores, impulse buying is what they're making their money on. You go in, you see something, oh, that just looks perfect for this situation or that, or that's so cute, or I really need that. I know it wasn't on my list, but I really need it. Anytime that I have those impulse buying feelings, what I will typically do is get out my phone and take a picture of the item. I will take a photo of it, I will take it back home, and I will think about it. And if then, you know, the two weeks or three weeks go by and I still really feel like that would be a blessing to us, then I can go back and get it on my next trip. That way I know that it is something that is not just an impulse buy, but it's something that is worth its money. Also, I am not opposed to deal shopping while I'm literally in the store. I will sometimes check Amazon to see if I can put something on our subscribe and save to get it for a cheaper amount. Um, we have this convenience of these cell phones, and so it's just use it. Our happiness cannot come from things. And if we are, are shopping as a, what do they call it? Retail therapy, <laughs> then perhaps we need to take a deep breath and step back and say, okay, Lord, what else could fill this hole that wouldn't break my pocketbook, that wouldn't cost money, that I could just do without and just enjoy the things that you've given me in this life. Okay, so I'm gonna end this here because I feel like I need to get inside and feed my hungry people. These are just a few ideas um, of my rambling self. I'm sure there's other videos that you could find that are very precise and bullet pointed and do a wonderful job at talking about frugal living, but this is what I have for you today. So again, always, one of my favorite things from you all is our, our relationship that we have in the comment section. So let me know just some things, some ideas that you have or things that you do within your family to save money. I would love to read about those and I know we can learn so much from each other. I'm just in the middle of this journey like you are. So let's all share together and I will see you guys really soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.